Thank you for viewing this instruction video for volunteers who do cashiering at nine health fair sites. Cashiers are the volunteers who accept funds from participants that are having their blood tested. Cashiers greet participants, mark their form, total up the charges, remove form copies, and manage payments. Many of you have volunteered as a cashier before. If so, we hope this instruction will refresh and solidify the procedures we use. For those of you who are new to this activity, we hope this tool will allow you to come to your fair with confidence that you know what is expected of you. Most nine health fair sites are busy with participants. The biggest crowds happen at the opening of the fair, so it's important that all cashiers be at their place and ready to assist participants when the doors open. At your fair, you will be one of a team of cashiers and you will be supervised by a trained cashier supervisor. Cashiers are assigned to one of three stations, those that take cash, those that take checks, and those that take credit cards. Regarding credit cards, please know that all sites that operate in the Denver metro area will accept credit cards and will use credit card machines. However, most sites outside of Metro Denver will not be accepting credit cards. If you're not sure about your site, you can ask your cashier supervisor. If you will not be accepting credit cards, then you can skip that part of these instructions. The first step in the cashiering process is for you to greet the participant and to take their participant form from them. Here you see a participant form. The ones you get from the participant will have all the items in yellow already filled in. This is a three-part form. The copy we want to keep is the center green copy, whereas the top and bottom copies stay with the participant after they leave your station. This is a close-up view of the cashier box area of the participant form. In most cases, the participant will have already placed an X in the column for each test they want done because this is usually done as part of the registration process. However, if there are no X's in the boxes, no problem. You can place the X's for the participant. If the X's have already been placed, then verify the tests they want by saying something like this. I see you want to get a chem screen, PSA, blood count, hemoglobin, and two colon screening test kits today. Is that correct? If, on the other hand, they have not placed any X's, then simply ask them what tests they would like and place an X in the box for each test. If people have not X'd a box, then it's possible you might be asked to counsel them about what tests they should get. There is a poster and a handout that should be available in the cashier area for this purpose. If they need even more assistance, you should refer them back to the registration or forms check area, where there are individuals who are trained to counsel regarding test selection. Completing the cashier box is a five-step process. We have just discussed step one, to be sure an X is placed in the column for each test the participant wants. Step two is to write the cost of each test in the total column. In the case of the colorectal kits, a participant might purchase multiple kits. If they do, mark how many kits they are getting and multiply the cost of each kit by that number and write the total in the box. Step 3 is to ask the participant if they would like to make a tax-deductible donation to Nine Health Fair. This is simple to do by saying something like this. Would you like to make a tax-deductible donation to Nine Health Fair? If they do, write the amount of their donation in the box. For some cashiers, asking for a donation seems to be difficult. However, it is important for you to know that these contributions are critical because they allow Nine Health Fair to provide free blood tests and screenings to those who cannot afford them. If a participant asks you what the donated money is used for, you can proudly tell them that these funds are used to provide free testing to individuals who could not otherwise afford it. Just as you are volunteering your time to improve the health of your community and the people in it, you can encourage participants to give their money for the same cause. Step four is to total up the column of charges. This column can contain a lot of numbers, so be sure to use a calculator for this purpose. A number of small calculators are provided for each cashier site, but you can bring one of your own for this purpose if you would like. 
enter the total in the box. And the fifth step is to indicate the method of payment by placing an X in the payment method box. It is important that you do all five steps for every participant. Notice that one of the payment options is voucher. A voucher is a certificate for free tests. Most are provided by Nine Healthfare to those who cannot afford to pay. However, some are purchased by companies for their employees. Note that all vouchers will indicate what test or tests they're good for. In this case, this one is good for a blood chemistry test. This year, Nine Healthfare is offering a new type of voucher, which is the Gift of Health. These Gift of Health cards have been purchased by individuals or companies and are good for one blood chemistry test. Please note they're not good for anything except the chem test and cannot be used as a gift card for $30 off other tests. When you receive a voucher or a gift of health, enter the payment by putting an X next to voucher. Because many participants will choose other tests also, it is likely that you will need to X multiple payment methods showing the amount received by each method. One last thing about vouchers. Please write the participant number on the voucher or gift of health. You can find this number on the label in the upper right hand corner of the participant form. And finally, regarding the cashier box, please know that some participants of a health fair do not want to have their blood tested. They only want to do the free screenings. In that case, mark an X in the no blood box and remove both the top white and center green copies. In these cases, take the top copy because that white form will not be needed by those who are drawing blood. Regardless of which cashier station you are working, be sure to carefully place cash, checks, forms, and receipts in the boxes provided. Your cashier supervisor will make regular rounds to pick up these items as they accumulate. In case you are concerned that you might forget some of these instructions, don't worry. Each cashier station will be supplied with a green laminated copy of cashiering procedures. This form outlines most of the protocols we have discussed here, and you can review this form on the day of the fair. Now we will discuss the use of the electronic credit card machines. If you are working at a site in the Denver metro area, you will be using these machines at your fair. However, most sites outside of Metro Denver will not be using them. You can check with your cashier supervisor to see if you will be taking credit cards at your site. Each credit card machine is accompanied by a small laminated quick reference sheet that provides step-by-step -step instructions about how to use the machines. In addition, each also has a more detailed written instruction sheet included with it. On the next few slides, we will discuss the key things you need to know about using the credit card machines. First, know that the machine must be plugged in to electricity in order to work, but it does not require a phone line. When the machine is plugged in, the screen should light up and read Batch Auth Mode. This means the machine is in the mode where it will batch the transactions that you enter. If it's not in this mode, it will not work, and you should contact your cashier supervisor for assistance. When you are presented with a credit card, look at the card to make sure it has a Visa or MasterCard logo on it. We accept only Visa and MasterCard credit and debit cards. Swipe the card with a magnetic strip facing outward. Once swiped, the display will show the card number, indicating the machine read the card properly. If you have a card that cannot be read, the information can be manually entered, following the instructions on the larger instruction sheet. Next, enter the amount of the charge using dollars and cents without a decimal point. For instance, if the charge is for $65, enter 6500. Be careful to not make the mistake of only entering a 6 and a 5, or the machine will only record 65 cents. Look at the display to be sure the charge is correct, and hit Enter to print the first receipt. Remove this receipt and give it to the participant to sign. While they are signing, hit Yes to print a second receipt for the participant, and then switch receipts with them. You keep the signed receipt, write the participant number on it, and place a signed receipt in a safe place. The reverse side of the laminated quick reference sheet discusses the process for giving a refund to a credit card payer. We will talk about refunds more in a minute. However, know that to give a credit card refund, first tap the 
refund key on the keyboard. When you do this, the word credit will show up on the display. Now you can swipe the card again, and rather than giving a charge to the card, you will place a credit back on it. All other instructions are the same. One last thing about credit cards. Be aware that you will probably run out of paper sometime during the day. However, changing the paper is very easy to do. Just press the plastic tabs on either side of the cover to open it up. Simply lay the new paper roll in, being sure the paper unrolls from the bottom. Then close the top over the length of paper, and you should be ready to go. Please know that a participant could return to the cashier station requesting a refund for tests that could not be done or requesting to purchase additional tests after they had already paid. If this happens, notify your cashier supervisor, who has special forms for managing these refunds and add-ons. Also remember your cashier supervisor has the experience to resolve most issues that arise during the fair, so be sure to consult with this person if you run into problems. Also know the Nine Health Fair office is only a phone call away if you need help with anything. We also want you to be aware that most sites are offering electronic pre-registration for participants. That means some participants will have already gone online to the Nine Health Fair website, registered, selected tests, and paid online. These pre-registrants will be managed at a separate pre-registration table at your site, and you will not need to process them. However, you need to be aware that this new form of registration exists. If someone comes to your station with a pre-registration form, redirect them to the pre-registration table or contact your cashier supervisor for assistance. And finally, thank you for viewing this cashier training video. We hope it helps you understand better the job that you will be doing at your upcoming fair. And we want you to know how much we appreciate you for volunteering to help the people in your community to take control of their own health. Without individuals like you who are willing to give their time to this effort, Nine Health Fair simply would not exist.